Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Blue. We are back with another video. This is going to be basically, um, we have news of 10.0.5 arriving in the 24th <clears throat> or the 25th. So basically when you're watching this, if you're watching it now, um, a couple resets. Um, and then also the Catalyst is opening up, uh, the Creation Catalyst is opening up at that same time. I will be making a different video about my feelings on that because um, unfortunately I'm not super, super happy about that and not allowing crafted gear to be used in the Catalyst. Um, but anyways, what we're basically going to be talking about is what is changing moving into 10.0.5. There's been a lot of changes um, to our talents specifically um, and uh, really wonderful overall, just wonderful changes. Moving into 10.0.5, as a feral druid, you should be feeling really, really good. Um, so that is really exciting. Now, if you're watching this video and you're saying, hey, I'm a new feral, I kind of want a guide video, I would go ahead and point you to this feral ultimate guide. The only thing that is changing moving into 10.0.5 is the talents. So this video is very good. Um, now, I will actually be redoing this video, <clears throat> um, a kind of a 10.0.5 ultimate guide video because these are kind of my big hits. Um, and if you're also just kind of interested in, hey, what is changing in um, the PTR, I would go ahead and check out this video. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the PTR and let's take a look at what the builds we're looking at. What are the builds that are changing? It makes it very easy for me as a content creator <clears throat> because moving into 10.5, basically nothing's changing except we're getting additional things. So it feels really good. Um, if you didn't watch my video last video, the, the, full, the whole thing about moving into uh, this PTR and this 10.0.5, initially they were trying to get away from a bleed build and make a bite build more viable and they really gutted the bleed build. Um, they actually reverted those changes and they're saying, hey, we're sticking with the bleed build and whatnot, which is really, really wonderful for us because for me as a content creator, I just look at this and I say, hey, what are some cool things that we can add to it? Um, so basically that's it. This is the build here. Let's go over and talk about it because there's a few changes that you may be interested in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab Primal Wrath. We're going to grab Tear Open Wounds, Double Clawed Rake. And I'm thinking about a Mythic Plus environment when I'm thinking about this AoE build. We're going to grab these three because this kind of lets us get into the lower half of the, the, the build. And basically here, our only two options available is Omen of Clarity, Tyros Energy. Omen of Clarity uh, against these two always wins out, so we're going to do that. Um, now, also moving into the this new patch, um, they did not like any builds where Survival Instincts was not implemented. Um, basically, they make content around you having those defensives. Um, so they're they're putting these Berserks under tiger, uh, your, your major wall. Um, so let's go ahead and grab things that we normally grab as far as AoE. Um, I'm going to grab Brutal Slash right here, but this is something we need to talk about moving into 10.0.5. Um, a change you guys probably were not expecting, um, but really interesting talking about Brutal Slash versus Wild Slashes. Um, let's go ahead and grab everything else that we normally grab. And here we are. We're done. So we have two points available. Um which is really exciting. So basically we have the choices of Taste for Blood, um, Tireless Energy, Merciless Claws, Moment of Clarity. Now what you need to know into 10 point, uh, moving into 10.0.5 is basically what the changes that they did is they made Tireless Energy one talent point and they made uh, Sudden Ambush one talent point. Now what this does is this gives us more options. They've also buffed Taste for Blood, which is really, really wonderful. They buffed Rampant Ferocity, really, really good. Um, I believe they also bust, buffed Sudden Ambush. Um, <clears throat> now what these do is these come at the cost of reducing Rip's overall damage. Now that actually just balances out our spec more. Um, if you've been playing Feral in the past, you're very much aware that, hey, Bleed was very, very strong. The rest of our spells were kind of lacking behind. They're going to take a little bit of damage from our bleeds and put those into the other damage to help balance us out. I think that was a wonderful decision. Um, but basically, out of all these talent choices, it's a no-brainer to go Taste for Blood. This also helps out balance our... Um, it does give us good AoE damage because we are later on going to be specking into Apex Predator 
but it really balances out our damage overall, especially specifically in dungeon content of doing this great AOE. But now in single target, we can rely on this to help boost our single target. So that way we're kind of not like a glass cannon in AOE. And then when it comes to single target, we're kind of just like there and we're trying to do more damage than the tank. Um, that's not actually the case, but it may have felt like that. Um, but now this is going to just help balance us out overall, making us a stronger M plus uh, character, which is really, really exciting. So here we go. We have one point available. Um, now this this is the, where we're going to go ahead and talk about Brutal Slash versus Wild Slashes. Now, I don't know if this is true. I haven't looked into it. Um, but I have been told by some comments that the meta is starting to shift with people that have gone um, mastery crit that they are now starting to go mastery haste. Now, why they would do that, I don't know. That sounds crazy to me, right? Um, but either way, I myself go mastery haste for some crazy reason, and I have actually found... And, and uh, unfortunately, when I was playing um, beta in the very past, when I was kind of putting out these guide videos, um, my gear now is better than it was then. And I am actually finding myself in an environment, and, and this is what my basically my build looks like. I'm in Merciless Claws, which is going to increase Shred and Swipe damage. And if I'm Talented in Brutal Slash, I'll increase my Brutal Slash. I am finding that in keys, running Mastery Haste, that... There are situations where I'm actually wanting to opt into Wild Slashes because it buffs my Thrash. Um, and I know you guys are probably thinking I am absolutely crazy, but I am actually wanting to opt into Wild Slashes in these, and I'm talking right now on live, I'm talking about maybe Algathar's Academy. I feel like it would be worth it. If you were Mastery Haste, it may be worth it to you and to invest into Wild Slashes because it is greater to buff your thrash in these massive AoE situations than it is to have a very big hitter brutal slash which hits your five targets and then it goes down damage after that. Now, on moving into patch 10.0.5, we may not want Merciless Claws, right? We may not want Merciless Claws because we want to go into wild slashes. We kind of want to go to the build, hey, I want to keep buffing my bleeds, right? Um, now, in certain situations, let's say Court of Stars, where it's very much a small pack content, um, you may want to opt into Merciless Claws and Brutal Slash. But either way, this is really wonderful for Feral that we have options. So let's say I'm continuing on an Algathar Academy, um, just this big AoE, big bleed pulls. Kind of what are my other options here? Well, I can probably either grab Tireless Energy or I can grab Moment of Clarity. This is kind of always that choice that has existed for us. Um, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, but I think it's really neat that we're kind of like moving away from again, this swipe, shred, brutal slash damage and more into bleeds. Although again, um, this, this point right here, this point right here is kind of, these are good choice nodes for balancing out our damage. Um, we kind of already have great AoE. You know, you may say, hey, I get it. Thrash is going to buff my AoE by a little bit, but I kind of want to be more balanced and be more single target, which is totally understandable. Um, and it just shows you that Feral is really flexible with its builds. Um, but again, I'm going to go for this just big, I want to do as much damage on that tree boss of Algathar Academy and the pull before an Algathar Academy. Um, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and go this. Uh, but again, your choices on that aren't going to change anything. Um, the Basically, the bottom of the, the tree is going to look the exact same. Now, I have got some questions. Convoke versus Incarnation. <clears throat> Me, specifically, I do like Convoke more. And um, personally, this is kind of an option of just saying, hey, balancing out the spec. Um, I do feel that Incarnation is better AoE. Very much AoE. Now, unfortunately, incarn or um, I'm sorry, I might have misspoke, but um, incarnation is better AOE. Now, unfortunately, I do feel like convoke is better better single target, especially when matched when tied with your berserk frenzy. But <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> but I understand convoke is very very RNG, um, and even in massive 
big pull situations, you may not even want to use your convoke. Um, let's, we're talking about that tree boss again or the ads prior to the tree boss, you're pulling everything. You don't even want to convoke in those situations because you're going to be getting so many apex procs that in those four seconds, you might be missing out on a couple bites, right? And you're just like, wow, uh, maybe I got a couple bites out of convoke that I could have already had just due to my apex procs and I kind of just wasted that cooldown. Um, so for me, I kind of just save that for more single target situations. But again, this is also another choice that you can kind of choose. Hey, do I want to be a little bit more AOE or single target? So it's really great when we're talking about an AOE build that basically we have these choices which aren't going to hinder our damage that much, but it is going to kind of help us get into, hey, I want to be AOE, but I want to get a little bit more single out of it. Um, so really wonderful, but this is the build that I will be running. Um, so really cool. Let's take a look at single target. <clears throat> so this is my single target build that we're running into. Now, um, again, there are some um, options available here. <clears throat> Not a ton of options, um, but let's go over those. So basically, we are going to go Merciless Claws, moving into that Brutal Slash that we kind of talked about, which is a little bit more single target ish. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to see that we have two points in Tyrus Energy. That's because we actually need those two points to progress down the tree. Um, we're going to grab and taste it for blood. Um, basically, um, everything's going to be looking the same. We're going to grab Lunar Inspiration, which you're going to see move down the tree a little bit. Lunar Inspiration, this is a very good um, build. I know that it doesn't interact with our Mastery, but it does interact with our Haste, and it also interacts with Adaptive Swarm. Now, the really wonderful thing with running Haste... Um, which is going to lead us into our next talent point option here um, with Adaptive Swarm, is Haste is going to, um, at certain breakpoints, um, increase the tick rate of our bleeds, and that is super, super valuable when we're talking about Adaptive Swarm, because Adaptive Swarm stays on the target for only a certain amount of time, and it enhances those bleeds or ticks at that time. So if we can squeeze in a few extra ticks during that time, we're getting a lot more benefit to that, so that's really wonderful. Um, and basically, that's going to uh, basically uh, put me into here why I'm running Frantic uh, Momentum. Now, if we try to compare this to kind of like the Blood Mallet builds that are on, um, they, that are simmed, and you can see um, basically what they do is they opt to go Cat Eye Curiosity or Cat's Curiosity to then grab Circle of Life, which is a needed spell. But by going this route, now they're also able to grab Apex um, Predator's Craving. Now, basically, Apex Predator's Craving does little for us in single target, but it does give us the potential to occasionally during that fight proc an extra bite, right? I think that is not the way to go in patch 10.0.5 because instead of getting an occasional bite, I could first of all get more haste, which we kind of spoke about why it is important. And instead of getting an occasional bite, I can get Convoke, which is going to guarantee me bites, a lot more bites than um, than Apex would throughout the entire uh, length of a fight, right? Um, so this is single target. Now, something really interesting and really fun that kind of like you can bring up with your builds, and there's not a lot of flexibility in this, um, but you could even possibly say, hey, Lunar Inspiration, it does, it does minimal for me. It kind of increases the complexity of um, the rotation, which it does for sure. Something really cool is I can actually move Lunar Inspiration to go Relentless Predator. Now, Relentless Predator is going to reduce bite overall from instead of 50 energy to 40. And what's really cool with this build is I'm already super invested with Tireless Energy, so I have a ton of energy. So we are just going to basically make a spam build here. shoot, this isn't, by going Incarnation, right? Incarnation is a really wonderful, um, when, when tied with Relentless Predator. And this is going to be so, I think this is going to be a really fun build. Will this be a meta build um, when we're running so much Mastery Haste or, you know, uh, is this a single target? So you are going to be running some a good amount of crit. Um, but I feel like, hey, this is probably going to be a very good flex option that is going to be a lot more easier to pull off. And hey, it may even outperform in damage, um, especially since this bite was increased in damage. 
Um, so I think that's going to be a very fun, interesting pick where people can go that incarnation and just get these spam bites with a ton of energy and, and energy regeneration with this Tyros energy. So that's really cool. Um, so I think, again, moving into 10.0.5, um, we have stronger builds. Um, that are probably going to potentially do more. Um, so I'm really excited. This is where it is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of the talents and you're really excited moving into 10.0.5. I will say out of this tree right here, um, we didn't get a ton of changes. I think the only change for me is I do invest into this thick high. I do invest into Ursine's Vigor um, because I find that in higher keys, I am moving to bear form. Um, and bear form, and, and if you do this right before a big hit, you're going to get increased health and whatnot. Um, but really cool is we are have the possibility of maybe taking out of this and flexing into uh, reducing the cooldown of Typhoon, which is going to be really great for specific keys like Quarter Stars, um, being able to push those imps um, away, kind of just CC all of the imps, and then have it re uh, recooled and having a lower cooldown so that you can go from one impact to the next very quickly without worrying about like, crap, I don't have my AOE, uh, my, my big AOE, which kind of like gives you out of incapacitating roar, which I prefer not to do because it takes you in bear. Um, but yeah, there's some really cool options even there. Well, basically just that. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Take it easy. Really exciting to be a, um, a feral druid. Um, and that's it. Take it easy, everybody. Peace out.